welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be cheap famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this is a collaboration with my beautiful bitches of Eastwick, Anya and Nona. And this is a fall inspired look. So, if you want to find out exactly how this look was achieved, and if you're watching me in black and white, what it looks like in glorious Technicolor, because I still haven't decided whether I'm doing the intro in black and white yet or not, it's not just as wise to you as it is to me. But, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, because here comes the tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I don't know yet whether I'm doing the intro in black and white. If it was, hello, welcome to Technicolor. If it wasn't, welcome back from the intro. Um, this is a teaching channel, so I always go at a speed that absolute beginners can follow me. Also means that with my chronic pain, I can slow down a little bit when I have to. If I'm going too slowly for you, there's a speed widget up there somewhere, just speed me up. Okay. Now this is a fall collaboration with the bitches of Eastwick, the gorgeous Anya and Nona. Um, and initially it was going to be fall foods or drinks, but then over here in the UK we don't really have as much like Halloween or fall type candy. I mean, uh, you, know, you think like the candy corns in America and um, I don't know, maybe mulled, I mean, we have mulled wine over here, but that's more Christmas than it is, you know, what we call autumn. Um, so we, to make it a bit easier for me, the girls said let's just do fall inspired. Which is awesome because if I remember, I'll put a picture of my back garden up here. But I've got a really, really long back garden, then we've got allotments behind us, then a railway line, river and woods on the opposite side. And what I love in the autumn, I don't think I've got any photos of it in the autumn, I think I've only got photos from summer and when it snowed, um, all of the trees change colour at different rates. There are some evergreens over there that stay green all year. You get, you know, some, some of the early ones are going sort of yellow and orange and red and then these ones over here are just starting to go yellow and then that one there is still green and that one there is completely shed. And I just love watching the autumnal colours starting to spread through the woods. Every morning when you when you look out of the kitchen window, it's like looking out onto a different scene because they've changed colour again. And I've got a pigment here from Omega Glitter OMG. Um, I have got a discount code with her. It is linked down in the description box. This is the Sunset pigment and I've been wanting to use this for quite a while. It is a I think it's a multi-chrome rather than just a duo-chrome, but it is gorgeous. It's got the golds, the greens, the oranges. That to me is how the woods look behind my house. And I want to see whether I've actually managed to rescue my Jelly Mud Shadow, because I've only, only had one of these short circuit. And I'd kept it really tightly done up, I'd kept the, the keep me lid on really tight. I even kept it in, because normally I throw the packaging away to make it easier to store. I even kept it in this, this way up, so that none of this was exposed to daylight or UV light. And it still dried up. So what I tried, I've got the Revolution, what do they call it, Revolution Mixing Liquid. And all I did was 
basically saturate the jelly much shadow with that mixing liquid. Mixed it together with the handle of a brush until it was liquid again and then recapped it and left it alone to set. Now fingers crossed it's not a jelly substance anymore. It's, it's set much firmer but I'm hoping I'm still going to be able to get some pigment out of it to use in this shadow and if it, in this look and if that works then if you've got jelly much shadows that are drying up but you still love the colour I don't think I'm going to get the same reflective effect that I did when this was a jelly but I'm hoping I'll still get the colour so that's my challenge in this task as well as creating a full inspired look um, I want to see if I've managed to fix my jelly much shadow so it's still usable right let's get you zoomed in faces wash moisturized SPF and primed as always and on my eyes I have got my chrome pebble primer yes I've got a discount for this as well um, all of my discounts are listed and they're all very clearly state whether I earn from them or not um, it really doesn't worry me whether you use them or not, whether I earn from them or not. Um, oh, I didn't get that mascara off very well, did I? Last night. Oh, in the shower this morning. There we go. Um, it doesn't worry me whether you use them or not. There's plenty of codes floating around for most of the companies that I've got discount codes with. You don't have to use mine. But if I can save you some money on products, then I will do. But you still only get 100% honesty from me. There is a film linked down below, Can You Trust Me? And I show you the kind of due diligence I go through before I'll even offer you a discount code. Because I've actually turned down four different discount codes that's been offered to me so far. Because I wasn't happy with the quality of the product. So... If I'm not happy with the product, I'm not going to give you a discount code to recommend you, that you buy it. Anyway, enough of that. I just want to talk you through eye shapes. Now, I've got deep set eyes, or what are sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes. Um, they're often mistaken for hooded lids because we get similar issues. We get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease, we can't just cut the socket, we have to go onto the upper lid. And when we put glitters on, even with glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through the middle. I'm going to talk you through how to work out whether you've got hooded lids or deep set eyes. And then I'm going to give you a, a cheat or a workaround so that you can follow any tutorial and make it work for your eye shape. Right. When I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids only if the static lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of your mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If I cover, this is my blind eye so I can close this one and still make sure I'm on camera, if I cover the visible mobile lid and then close that eye you can see I've got as much lid space again in the crease it disappears back away and if I roll it up and cover the static lid and do the same you can see I've got lid space there that tucks back away as well and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives us the same issue that hooded lid chap and chap s's get now if you have hooded lids get a brush like this or a pencil brush and sketch out on your static lid where you need your new crease to fall Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow so use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow rather than leaving a space like I usually do. With deep set eyes all you have to do when you're blending a colour through your crease every so often sit back, relax your brows and just make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for different eye shapes, but once you know what your eye shape is, it's dead easy. Right, 
I'm going to go into this. This is a loose pigment and I'm going to be using it dry. So expect fallout. This is one of the Oh My Glitter multi-tone pigments. I love Oh My Glitter stuff. She's always done. I mean, I've used her. I've got some pigments from her that go back years and years and years and they're still great. Pressed pigments, that is, as well. I've got... Uh, how many of her palettes have I got now? One, two, three, four. I've got five of her palettes, four full-sized, and the little mini quad that she did with uh, Violet Moth and I love all of them. She does such amazing, amazing quality. Um, she's UK, it's vegan, perfect. So I'm going to start off by going in to this pigment. I'm going to pick some up. You can't really see it because it's almost the same colour as the tip of these bristles. This is the Royal and Langnickel Sheep Pro Crease Brush. And I'm going to start off just really gently, see what I mean about the fallout, you are going to get that with loose pigments. And I'm just going to buff that along the top there. And then really, really buff this down. And bring the colour down. But you can see just how much you can actually get just from one dip of the brush. And I don't know if you can actually, whether the multi-chrome is actually showing on camera. If I move my head around, hopefully you can see that it's, it's definitely giving us different colours. And I'm just really buffing out. The reason I like this Chrome Pebble Primer is because it goes on dry, it's not wet. So you don't have to set it with um, like a translucent powder or anything before you can start blending on it. You can blend straight away as you can see there. Um, and I love that about the, uh, the Crime Pebble Primers. They've got six shades. The white is obviously the lightest that I've used. Um, they've also got chocolate brown and a black at the deepest end of the spectrum and then three skin tone shades in the middle. You can buy a half size pot initially to test the formula. Um, I bought a half size pot of the white one when I bought some of their pastel pigments in the summer to try because I wanted a nice white base and the, uh, the MAC paint pot that I was using at the time, soft ochre, was yellow toned and I didn't want, I wanted to give the pastel pigments the absolute best chance of looking pastel and true to colour um, and I have not used my MAC um, eyeshadow primer since. I have only used this Crime Pebble one because it's great. It works with loose pigments, it works with set pigments, it works with mattes, it works with shimmers. Um, I haven't found a single palette or pigment yet that will not blend on this particular colour. It's weird because in my viewfinder this is looking really scrappy because of all the different colours that are showing up. But when I look in my mirror I can see it is perfectly blended. It's just where the light is hitting the multi-chrome. Hopefully you can see that as I move my eye around. And let's continue the same with this eye. So, Bitches of Eastwick, you will have seen me, if you are a regular viewer, you will have seen me collab with them on a lot of occasions. Um, we, we were drawn together by the fact we'd all been, quite frankly, shit upon by a larger creator who everyone else seems to think is lovely, but who to us was an absolute grade A bitch. Um, <laughs> this is actually looking bright copper now in my viewfinder. But once I buff it out a little bit, hopefully we'll see some of the other tones come through again. This is what I like about loose pigment. You can put it on and then you can really, really manipulate it around. Much easier than you can with a pressed pigment. 
And I'm just buffing and buffing and buffing to really blend that shade in. Yes, I've got fallout. Yes, I knew that was going to happen. Yes, I'm currently cleaning my brush off. Just going to tidy up the pigment a little bit. Just so I can make sure I'm getting similar kind of tonage both sides. That is the only thing with multichromes because they are multi-chrome and different shades you do have to sit back make sure you're getting the same shape both sides and make sure you're getting the same blend both sides I just need to buff this top out just a little bit more so yes pictures of Eastwick it's Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977 and Anya Stamper also known as Pink Sweets and I am so proud to be able to call those girls my friends. They are wonderfully supportive. Anya is the uh, collab queen of YouTube. She collabs with, she's introduced me to so many different channels that she's collabed with. Um, and she, like I, um, don't look at how many numbers or how many, um, you know, how big the channel is. We, we don't look at that. What we look at is um, do we like the person's personality, do we like the looks that they produce and if we do that then you know we'll happily collab with them. Okay I'm really really liking this pigment this is looking stunning and you can see it's a really quick easy way to get an absolutely fabulous look without a huge amount of be quite frank effort because that was literally just blending out one pigment now the question of the day is will my crow and pebble one actually perform not my crow and pebble my colour pop jelly much getting myself mixed up now folks right I'm going to grab this lip brush, this is a Jeffrey Morphe JS24 but I like this because it can get right down into the corner there and let's see just how this jelly much shadow is looking yes it's not a jelly anymore, it's definitely a set um, format or formula but it seems to be picking up on the brush okay don't seem to be getting any problem with picking it up. Let's see whether it will actually lay down on the lid. Yes, it looks like it will. Yay! There you go, folks. If you've got jelly much shadows that have um, dried up, you can use a mixing medium to reconstitute them. They're no longer a jelly, but they are still usable. So you still get your money's worth. Which is awesome, because that means I don't mind buying more jelly match shadows now. Because I was actually put off buying any more of them when this dried up. Until I was sure I could actually make it work. And now normally, you know, I put a darker shade on the outer corner here. But I'm just going to carry this copper all the way across. From inner to outer corner because it will pick up on some of the copperiness of the Oh My Glitter Primer Primer pigment. Honestly folks this lack of sleep is really catching up with me. Um, if you've not watched some of my more recent films I'm currently struggling with a bout of cellulitis um, due to a bad reaction to a medication that the doctor tried me on and an allergic reaction to a plant in my mother-in-law's drive and um, I ended up with really bad cellulitis that's gone right down to kind of nerve level so it's as it dries up it's extremely extremely painful because it's kind of tightening and it feels like um, 
it's it's like the worst sunburn plus gravel rash plus somebody attacking your leg with a cheese grater plus someone pouring gasoline on it and setting light to it and unfortunately it's in the leg that suffers the most with fibro which means I get the burning pins and needles in it as well so sleep just recently well, what, what is that what is sleep when, when can I get some of that again please so I really really like this this is so impactful Ooh. right now this one because of the deep creasing that I've got here, I do have to stretch the lid out. Otherwise what happens is the shimmer packs into the deep crease. But it packs in loosely rather than being properly blended like I'm doing now. And then as I move my eye through the day, it ends up cascading down my face. Which... It's not the look I'm going for. But yay, I am so glad that that worked by mending this um, or fixing this jelly much shadow. It's a shame it's no longer a jelly because that was so cute and very, very cooling in the summer as well. When you put it on your lid, it just felt so lovely and fresh. But I mean, I've not wet this brush at all. You've seen I've just gone straight from the pot to my lid and yet I don't think it's lost any of the the high shine that it used to have. Um, which surprises me because I genuinely thought it would not be as reflective. So I am extremely happy with that. Right, I am going to pause you while I, just going to recap this so it doesn't dry out again, um, I'm going to pause you while I go and put some foundations and base products on etc and do my brows probably quite, um, they're going to need to be strong brows today aren't they to go with a strong look. Um, and then I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, you will see me instantly, but I will see you the next time I press the record button. So, if you're ready, here I am. As you can see, I actually got my brow pomade out. My brown brow pomade that I hardly ever use. Now I have all of the coloured pomades. Shh. Why does my phone always do that? It was quiet all the time that I had you paused. The minute you come back and I press record, on the phone. Honestly, people. Really? Right. A highlight, I'm going to grab Fallen Angel from House of Sparkles. This is a UK indie brand. But just look how beautiful that is. Um, let's finish off the bottom of the eye first. Let me grab... Where's my Jeffrey Smudger brush? Because I like that one. Right. Now, the regular viewers know I normally go under there with one colour and then smudge it out with another. But because I've only used the one tone up here, I'm going to go back into that pigment. But I've got to be so careful because obviously any fallout now, I'm um, screwed. So this is the Jeffrey Morphe, wish they'd put it in a bit more obvious writing for those of us who are not 12, JS10, this is the smudger brush. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to dip it into the pigment and then tap it off into the lid and then even wipe it on the lid just a little bit just to try and knock as much of the pigment off as I can. Might even pat it lightly on the um, washcloth that I've got there. And I'm just going to really carefully, very very gently, buff this along the lower lash line. Very 
very very gently. I do not want this ending up down my face. Shush! Fruit. Okay, I'm just going to take the pigment off of the brush and then very gently run along it just to make sure I pick up any loose pigment that could end up falling. Lovely. Right, let's put the lid back on my pigment. I love the Omega Glitter Loose Pigments, they are amazing. Uh, as I said, that one was called Sunset. Right, this, believe it or not, is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago now. I'm going to go into this house of sparkles and I'm just going to pop a little bit under the tail of my brow there. I wanted quite a warm toned highlight because obviously it's a warm eye look that I've done. And again into here. If I was brave enough I would actually use Jeffrey's um, uh, Liberace which is bright gold. But I, I don't really, I, want, I don't want to take away from the kind of overall coppery greenness that I've got going on here. Because I think it's really pretty. Right, I'm going to pause you for one final time while I chuck highlight on the rest of my face and pop some mascara on, choose a appropriate lipstick. And I will be back with my finished look. I know you can't wait to see what colour of lipstick I choose. <coughs> Alright, I'll see you in just a moment. I am back and my top is falling off again. Right. I really like this look, I have to be honest. Um, I used my Catrice Glam and Dull Waterproof Volume Mascara, which is the dupe for Bad Girl Bang, because... My eyes have just started playing up and watering, my fibre is kicking in again, um, which is really frustrating, but at least it's happened at the end of the makeup look, not the middle of it. Um, the lipstick is Baby Daddy from Jeffree Star, and it might be a little bit sad putting it on because obviously we lost him recently, which is so sad. Anyway. Enough sadness, this is a fall collaboration with my girlies. And this is my contribution. I hope you all like it okay. To me, it really does sum up how the woods at the bottom of my garden actually look in the, in the, in the fall as they all start to change and... Parts of it are green and parts of it are gold and some of it's just got nothing on at all. So I'm really, really happy with this. Uh, if you're one of my 4F babies and you have liked and commented and maybe even shared this film for me, uh, please double check that you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Uh, even if I'm still appearing in your recommended videos, there is still a chance you may have been unsubscribed, so please just double check that. Uh, once you have done that, I'm going to need you to go over to Anya's channel and to Nona's channel. And I'm going to need you to watch their films and show them as much love and support in their comments section as you always do in mine. Because as I have said many times, the 4F family is one of the nicest families on YouTube. Now, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing you must have liked just a little bit of it. I've got an awful lot of other films you can have a watch through if you've already watched both Anya's and Nona's. Um, and I'd be delighted if you'd like to join us here too by hitting the subscribe button. And becoming part of my wonderful 4F family. Right, that is quite enough for me. I am going to disappear so I can take some photographs before my eyes 
uh, weeping completely ruined the whole look. And then I got some editing to do to get a film up for tomorrow. Good lord. I'm running so behind. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.